How's it going guys? My name is Kevin Nugent and I'm one of the managers at Liberty Vapor. Of course, we're on a very, very serious topic today because it does affect us as an industry is battery safety. I've heard, I'm pretty sure you guys are all heard about a little bit about this and that, but it's very important that every single one of us educates ourselves when it comes to batteries. Unlike when it comes to a lot of batteries that we're used to using in remote controls and stuff like that, double A's, triple A's, C D's, whatever. The ones that we primarily use and a lot of our devices are usually generally 18650s, 18500s, 490s, 16340s, blah blah blah. Generally speaking, a lot of our devices now these days, if they don't come with a lipo pack inside of them, they use a separate battery. Unlike any other batteries, when it comes to double A's and stuff like that, they only discharge generally about, I'd say, less than two volts, to be realistic. Now, they do have a protection in those type of batteries. Now, with the applications that we use, such as like the Kanger sub box, top box, uh, the Relos, RX 200s, mechanical mods, when it comes to those devices, generally speaking, they might take either a single 18650 or multiple 18650s. Now, I'm pretty sure all you guys have seen news reports when it comes to it. We always want to make sure that we're not part of that bad media that's always blown up out of proportion. Now, when it comes to the batteries themselves, this is what an 18650 would generally look like. This is just a simple Samsung 25R battery itself. Looks like a double A and whatnot, but don't let this thing fool you. On a full charge, these things are first off unprotected, meaning if you short these things out, they become extremely, extremely violent. Sometimes anywhere from getting extremely hot, burning your hand with somewhere else, anywhere from the second to third degree burns from what I'm seeing. And sometimes catastrophically, they get actually explode. So it's very important that we keep these things pretty much like a gun, safe. So when it comes to these type of batteries, most of the people I've been seeing a lot when it comes to customers, when they're not educated with this stuff, they're very reckless with these batteries. Oh, I could just buy uh, an IPV D3 here and I could just swap out batteries whenever I need to. Great, you could do that. But what are you going to do with the secondary battery that you're not, you know, using at the moment? The one thing I can't stress enough is find some sort of protection when it comes to these batteries when you're not using them. If they're not on the charge or being charged, they're not charged within the unit itself, these things are very, very unsafe, should I say, in general, when it comes to letting them sit by themselves, being short circuited between two pieces of metal, change, keys, coins. So when something like this, you want to treat this stuff very, very seriously. What I honestly recommend in that case, get yourself some sort of cover. Something like this will cost you a couple quarters, maybe a dollar or something in most of your stores that you usually go to. Stuff like this. This one specifically is just a silicone sleeve. It just simply slides right in, stretch it, and you can put this on your keys because it has a little hearing holder. But these things tear, so just be careful with something like this. Something I actually strongly recommend more than these little guys, that if you're carrying more than one battery to like an event of some sort, going out on vacation, or even taking them on flights and stuff like that, it's very important that you get some sort of battery case. And I can't stress this enough because this is how I keep all my batteries in protective cases. <coughs> when it comes to these units, you always want to be safe with them, no matter what size it is, 26650, 18650, 18500s, 18350s, treat them all exactly the same way. You always want to keep them in some sort of protection. Now, when it comes to battery safety, it's not just keep it in the case and whatnot. There's a little bit of maintenance behind these batteries. Keep in mind with any other rechargeable batteries, the cells inside the actual batteries themselves will start wearing down over time, just as you notice with any other rechargeable battery, especially being used so frequently, so often, that it gets to the point where it start wearing down. Now, generally, double A's and stuff like that, once they go bad, you can just generally just, you know, throw them in a recycling bin, a safe one, at least, that they recycle batteries for, or you could take it to like an electronics store like Best Buy or Staples to literally recycle these things. 
Now, when it comes to these type of batteries, the one thing you want to make sure of is the condition of the actual battery itself. It's a little bit hard to see, but as you can see, the battery itself, and besides the green marking I have on this battery, no thing that's a pair, is the wear around the terminals. A lot of these devices will like to catch on to these protective little sleeving or the little heat shrink wrap that they have around this battery. Now, when it comes to these batteries, you want to make sure that you have it in a tip-top condition. What I mean by that, it's not only like keeping it in a case and whatnot, it's literally making sure there's no wear on these. As you may see from like DIY boxes and whatnot, sometimes the battery terminals will actually start grabbing onto the lip of the actual battery and start tearing them. In this particular case, on this battery that I do not use anymore, that it's actually in the pile of all the ones I'm actually recycling, as you can see, there's a small little tear on the bottom of this here. And you'll see sometimes those will be like nicks and scratches and whatnot. Even the smallest ones, to be honest, it's better to be safe than sorry. Either one, replace the battery completely, get this one recycled, or two, get it rewrapped. And what I mean by rewrapped, literally is you would take it to any reputable dealers, including ourselves at Liberty Vapor and all of our locations, we can always get these things rewrapped for you for very, very cheap. I think these are only like 50 cents for a rewrap on something like this, and we'll help you do it for you. We'll educate you even more on this. But, this. but when it comes to these batteries, you always make sure they're in tip-top condition. You notice that this one has a small little gouge right over here on this lip, so it's starting to start to rip on there. Now, when it comes to these batteries, treat them like anything else. Don't obviously leave it in the car when it comes to like extreme temperatures. I mean, freezing cold is one thing, but if it's like really, really hot on a summer day, it's 98 degrees outside, don't leave these batteries in there. They're very temperamental when it comes to heat. Now, with these type of batteries, say you have it rewrapped, you have it in cases, you're all ready to go. You're not just quite done yet. Now, these are meant for more advanced users when it comes to these type of devices. Some of us actually like to use these things for more powerful devices. What I mean by that is, for an example, I have a Able Timekeeper. This is a mechanical mod. There's no circuitry inside this here that actually prevents anything from, you know, possibly shorting out. Excuse me. Literally, there's a little single button. I would push on it. Completes a connection. Notice that it's vaping right now. Now, when it comes to these type of devices, you want to be very, very, very careful with these. These are only meant for literally advanced users. And what I mean by that is because there's a lot of different things that go on with just these metal tubes that can cause a very big issue just as if you put these in your pretty much your pocket full of change keys or anything like that. Now, when it comes to safety, when it comes to these devices, you have to have pretty much the tools you'll need to prevent anything from happening. What I mean by that is some sort of device that reads the resistance on these. Now, when it comes to tanks and whatnot, rebuildables, there's two different ballparks here. Rebuildables, like such as these, I have, for an example, I have the battle cap or battle deck with the uh, mod father cap here. For those that doesn't mean anything, some people, they love it. What I mean by that is when you have your coil and everything set within the actual unit itself, if it's a rebuildable, get some sort of device with some sort of regulation on it, or even better, get yourself a Coil Master 521 tab. The great thing about stuff like this, for an example, I will grab my tank right over here. So this is technically a rebuildable tank. I don't know if it's gonna short or anything on there. So what I'm gonna do first off is screw it on there while it's gonna read the resistance. And right now it's reading at 0.49 ohms, about half an ohm, realistically. Stuff like this, you wanna make sure that you have an actual connection. There's not a short where it's fluctuating within the resistance too crazy while you have it reading. Now, if you say for an example, you don't have a device like this, you have a Segeli 150 watt, for an example, or a real low, 
Now, I do have a DNA 200 below here that works great just in case you don't have one of these guys. These work great just as well because for one, they're regulated. These will actually give you error messages as if you actually had a short, if you see the actual fluctuation within the resistance, generally speaking, with most of the devices that we see on the market now. You could actually screw it on here before using on a mechanical device and fire the actual unit to see if it's actually working correctly. Last thing you need is any kind of short that you don't see happen. Put on a mechanical device, short the battery out, and these start venting. Possibly exploding. It's not cool. Now, one thing I cannot stress enough too. Now I see a lot of you vapors, of course, when it comes to these units come into our stores. Always want to blow the biggest cloud. I have no problem with that at all. By all means, I'm the same exact way. Well, when it comes to these devices, when using a mechanical device for one that has a hybrid connection, and what I mean by that is, for an example, I'm going to unscrew the top portion of one of my timekeepers, or my able, sorry. I'm going to unscrew the atomizer. A hybrid connection has a direct connection from the actual atomizer to the battery. What I mean by that, this is the top cap that you see right here. As you see, there's no pin, nothing like that. The actual pin itself, when I screw it in, makes direct contact with the actual battery. This is even more scarier when it comes to mechanical devices because I've seen countless amount of times on the news where people are getting hurt and whatnot. And it honestly discourages a lot of people that don't even vape at all, let alone try to get into this stuff. We're trying to make everybody successful here. We're trying to use it as an alternative when it comes to tobacco products. Stuff like this when it comes to hybrid connections, Using tanks, for an example, I have a couple of tanks which I'll show right here. I have the Triton V2. You'll notice there's a little center pin inside the threading here. This is your positive connection when it comes to what makes connection with the device or whatnot as well. And then the outer threading is your negative. As you may see, that pin is so close to the deck if not, it's actually completely flush with it. Let me actually show you a little bit better picture here. So this is so close to it. I consider this completely unsafe when it comes to using any kind of hybrid connection on there. Why do I say that? It's because this pin itself in the center is so close to the threading outside. Imagine if it actually made direct connection with your battery, what's generally gonna happen? You push a little bit of friction when you screw it on there, it's gonna short. Once again, you could have that possibility of venting a battery. It's very important that you guys understand this. When it comes to devices like these, I do not first off recommend a lot of these tanks in this particular manner to use on mechanical devices. The ones I do recommend are, for an example, if you have a rebuildable tank and whatnot, you could actually have a pin that sticks out and it actually does not recess within the 510 connection. For those that don't understand what a 510 connection is, it's just the simple threading that they use on most of these devices that we vape on. You'll notice on this, for example, this is just a tugboat atomizer, or atomizer, I'm sorry, a rebuildable section. You'll notice that this pin actually protrudes outside of these threads with a heavy insulator in between it. So for something like this, this is considered safe. What I don't consider safe, even if it sticks out, for an example, the Subtank Plus. Something like this, yes, it does have a protruding pin on there, but the one thing you want to make sure of is, first off, if one, if it's adjustable, or two, it's spring-loaded. A lot of these devices can make it a lot easier for people to use, especially if they have a connection on the 510 that's so recessed that it makes a better connection, it's easier to work with, more versatile. Now, this pin, as you may notice, 
actually moves ups and down or moves up and down. If you ever use a device like this, never ever ever use a tank such as this on the actual hybrid connection. Reason being, once again, you push this connection when you screw it down, what's gonna happen? It's gonna immediately short and nobody's gonna like that. When it comes to these devices, make sure your battery is in tip top condition. Make sure you have no physical wear on the actual battery itself when it comes to dings, dents, and stuff like that on there. I mean, realistically, with these th batteries, treat them extremely well, especially if they're older ones and whatnot. Get them recycled. Get yourself some new batteries. They're not expensive. When it comes to these, using on any kind of devices, especially mechanical ones, you want to make sure that they're First off, in tip-top condition for it, for one, you always want to make sure you're working within the certain tolerance of them as well. Now, when it comes to certain tanks, like rebuildable tanks, I do have, for an example, like the Monster V3 rebuildable tank. Now, this pin actually does stick out a little bit, but my personal opinion about it, I'd much rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to go to the hospital and have a huge medical bill just for something I use as an alternative because I've been vaping for the last five years. I don't want to go back to cigarettes. I'm pretty sure you guys that are vaping at the moment that have been smoking in the past don't want to either. Much rather be safe than sorry. Make sure that pin sticks out. Now, getting down to the point when it comes to these certain types of batteries. Now, I'm going to grab a couple right over here and just show you some examples. Now, there's always these different manufacturers depending on where you get your batteries from. They have different companies, different ratings and whatnot. There's a couple of things you want to make sure of when it comes to these. Now this is a little bit going to be lengthy, so if you guys understand battery safety, great. You can move on, you can stop the video right here. But to continue on with this, there are different manufacturer batteries. As you, as you may have seen, you've probably seen like for example the LG chocolate batteries. You've seen MXJOs, EFS batteries, Sony batteries. So, not only do you first off want to find yourself real batteries, like authentic batteries, you want to find the one that works for you. And what I mean by that, as you may see, I do have several different types of batteries. These green ones, for an example, are the newer versions of the Samsung. The Samsung I'm holding in my hand right now has been discontinued. This is the 25R. So with something like this, this is an older style battery, 2,500 milliamps. Now, the green one that I'm holding in my hand, it's a little bit hard to see because it is a little bit faded from me rubbing it on so much. It's still a, technically a Samsung battery. It's the 25R5. You don't have to go specifically for these batteries, but for heavy users that are using mechanical devices or unregulated devices, I strongly recommend using a Samsung 25R5. These guys, even though they have a little bit less battery life because they're technically 2500 milliamps, are a lot more safer in chemistry than, for example, these guys. Now, I'm not going to tell you which one's better and which one isn't because that's all personal preference. But I have seen countless amount of times with people with LG chocolate batteries. For an example, there's two different current ratings. To pretty much break it down in simple terms, there's a discharge when it comes to a current continuous discharge, and there's a pulse. Pulse is literally about a split second. Most of us take longer than a drag when it comes to most of our vaping devices. Literally, we could literally hold down here. That itself was about a second or two, just inhaling and holding down on there. Pulse, you never really want to worry about as much as you will when it comes to continuous current output on these batteries. What I mean by that is do not use batteries, for an example, that have anything that's named fire, like ultra fire, for an example. Not to say these batteries are not good in different applications, but I do not recommend them vaping because those batteries are meant honestly more for like flashlights, high power flashlights. These devices that we have currently, for example, like the IPVD3, they actually pull out more current than those flashlights can actually provide. Not to say you probably can't use the same batteries, 
that you use for vaping and those flashlights, but you won't work it and vice versa. When it comes to these type of batteries, especially regulated stuff, you should be fine to be honest. When it comes to unregulated stuff, like unregulated boxes, DIY boxes, mechanical mods, you want to have a device once again, like I showed you, like a real low, like a regulated device that shows you your current, well, not your current, your um, resistance, or at least an ohmmeter like the 521 tab, which will do your current, your actual resistance reading, and it'll also fire it for you on this particular device. And this is not a sponsorship of any sort of just putting on devices. This is stuff that I personally use. These devices, when it comes to these batteries, are meant for certain applications. From my personal experience using these batteries for quite some time, these green 25R5s from Samsung were great for unregulated devices, unregulated boxes, anything that really would draw a lot and a lot of current without any kind of chips that hold back on the actual power on any kind of safety features. Now, I do have, for an example, a case of them right over here. For an example, I have the MXJO 3000 milliamps, 35 amp, continuous, well, pulse current output. I like these batteries. I, can, I can't say that they're not the greatest when it comes to mechanical devices, but personally speaking, I mean, I find these batteries do die quicker with unregulated or mechanical devices. I personally like these a little bit more unregulated because, first off, they do have a little bit longer battery life, and they're about, honestly about the same price when it comes, it might be a couple of dollars more than expensive than the Samsung's. Honestly, when it comes to devices, find the battery that fits for you. There's a bunch of knockoffs in the market, so very, be very careful, do your research when it comes to finding the right battery for your device, or honestly, just shoot us an email at Liberty Vapors on our website, on Instagram, Facebook, and anything, or you could actually even shoot me a e personal email at kevin at libertyvapor.net, and I could do as much as I can to help you guys. What I mean by that when it comes to counterfeit batteries, though, a lot of these batteries, for example, I have these guys here. These batteries are the Sony VTC batteries. This particular battery I don't use anymore because it's so worn out. It's dented on the top a little bit here. But with this particular battery, which is the Sony VTC4 batteries. For an example, it's very hard to tell when these batteries are counterfeit or not because they don't have any way of actually telling you on these. They literally just have laser engravings underneath the actual seal itself and it's hard to tell. There's a lot more reputable battery companies these now where they actually put some sort of scratch off here, which you'll just literally scratch off and get your code. And you can go literally on the website for whatever the manufacturers to tell if it's an actual real cell. If it's something that's not just rewrapped or something else. But that's a whole different ballgame at that point. At least find yourself a good battery, stick with it. Until at least when it comes to any kind of maintenance behind them, get them rewrapped when as, as much as you have damage going to the actual wrap itself. And make sure you keep these things in a safe container, especially when you're traveling. Especially when it comes to the TSA, I know they're very strict when it comes to this stuff. You can't have loose batteries just on your carry-on. It's considered a hazard. That's why you've seen news reports when it comes to these explosions, batteries venting and whatnot. Is because they weren't protected correctly and they were not carried correctly so once again if you guys have any questions please contact us contact myself at Liberty Vapor in any way or form Facebook Instagram our website or even shoot me personally an email and I'll help you as much as I can as well other than that keep on vaping even though that wasn't that much, <laughs> and vape safe. Take care.